Hey everybody, this is Aubrey. And this is Melody, and welcome back to our podcast, Mostly, Mostly Macabre. Macabre. Okay, so what's going on, everyone? What's been new in your lives? We just had a bunch of chit chat before we started recording, so now we're all chit chatted out. <laughs> we were reminiscing <laughs> on the days when we were all co workers together. And how horrible it was. And how much better we're doing now. <laughs> we are so much happier. And all three of us could not be happier. Take that. Can't wait to quit. <laughs> Let's hope this takes off. Uh, so anything new? Any plans? Um, I had a little birthday dinner yesterday with a few friends. My friend Marissa put it together. Happy it birthday. It was a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. It's not, it hasn't happened yet. My birthday is actually on Friday. But we're not but. recording Friday, so <laughs> happy birthday. We're not recording Friday. <laughs> But yeah, I got some cute little gifts that I am excited about, like this little bottle. Nice, nice. Did you, got, more importantly, did you have good food? Because that's what I, I did. Care about. I had. Um, we went to <laughs> Bella Brava. Mm. It's um, an Italian place. They have one in St. Pete, but they have one in Midtown now in Tampa, and it was delicious. It was really, really good. And I'd never been to Midtown before. Have you been? No. It's really cute. I didn't know that it was there. Um, I went to the REI store a while ago to get a present. I think it was for my dad or for something. I got him a present there. And I didn't go any further than REI. But if you go b- back, like past if you keep that, walking. If you keep walking, <laughs> there is so much stuff out there. There's a Ben and Jerry's. There's mm. um, all sorts of little cute restaurants and stuff. It's adorable. Nice. Nice. So highly recommend going there. Nice. Kevin, anything new in your world? Same old, same old. I know, me too. That's why I'm trying to push it off on you. <laughs> like, what do I do? Come on, guys, do Nothing. something interesting. Got- yeah. Anyone interesting? Because I know I'm not. <laughs> oh, I finished watching The Staircase on HBO. <gasps> oh, okay. I did too. Did you? Wait, is this, is this different than Staircase on Netflix? This, oh, yeah. This, this is one different. Isn't, um, isn't a documentary. It's a it's like a movie like oh, or a show. Like a recreation? Right? There's a name for it. I just don't remember it yeah. right now. It's not real, but it's based on... Based on, okay. It's yeah. like behind the scenes of making the documentary. Oh, and it has this one lady, which is the reason I started watching it. She's so amazing. She's like on all of the scary shit. Tony Collette. Who is she? She plays Kathleen. Gotcha. Oh, yeah. Yeah. She's is, in all the scary movies. Kathleen yes. the one that she's fell so down the good. stairs? Yes. Ah, okay. Well, now I have to see Yeah, it. I was surprised because she's like a big name. She's amazing. Yeah. I love her. Oh, and Sophie Turner's in it. I know you guys haven't seen Game of Thrones. Shit. Yeah. But Sophie Turner's in it, and she was Don't also amazing. Don't bring that up. People are going to shit on us for not knowing. <laughs> <laughs> um, like I fall asleep. I can't keep going. The guy that plays Michael Peterson did an amazing job. Yeah. Because if you like actor. compare the mannerisms of the real Michael Peterson, like the way he talks, his mannerisms and stuff, he Colin Firth was spot on. It no, was he amazing. did a good job. He did such a good job. He did do a good job. Considering... What what's his face? Mm-hmm. He's so creepy in real life. Like the yeah, real. Yeah, I was gonna ask. He's what? so weird. I hate him. Yeah, he's weird. But do you think he murdered her? I fucking think he did. <laughs> Absolutely. So, like, one of the things about the show HBO on HBO, The Staircase, I was getting a little irritated that I felt like they were being too sympathetic towards him. Did you feel that way too? Well, that's why I watched it because my mom. I, I wasn't. I was like, okay, I'm all staircased out. Whatever. You know, like I've seen it all. <laughs> mm-hmm. I think he did it. He's a big freak. But like, my mom's like, no, it's more sympathetic toward him, but like, not like, it's just a different angle. She mm-hmm. said, and I was like, okay, I like different angles because I was thinking about the Scott Peterson where that documentary on, eight, on, I've seen that one on too. Hulu where yeah. it's more of like, like, I totally believe he did it, but to see different mm-hmm. things that came up and what they left out, like that's, I don't know, I like, I could see certain areas being like, ooh, that could be reasonable doubt. You know what I mean? Like, I like Just that comparison. Just when I thought that they were being too sympathetic towards him, though, they, they start it. turning it around. Mm-hmm. And I loved it. I it like was different just angles. so well made. It was so good. Highly recommend that mm-hmm. you guys watch it. It was awesome. I'm not going to lie, though. The whole, like, when you first heard about the obble, you're like, what is wrong with these people? You're like, a freaking obble? Give me a break. But then when you watch it, and you're like, but you know what? I can see that. Yeah. You're like, Wait. And the little, like, three prongs. Yeah. That, that's. <laughs> the part the little like three like, prong yeah the way it looks and you're like ooh and like I it's don't like, know well shit <laughs> I don't know. 
Especially if you grew up in like a like a country type area. Like I grew yeah. up in a really small town. We have owls. I had a screech owl that used to like yell in my window every my night. My cousin's chicken got scooped up by a hawk. I whenever know. I was so coming you know, home from so school when you one in, day, this shit happens. Yeah, so when you live in these areas, a coyote is like <laughs> literally would just be running around eating your pets. Mm-hmm. It happens. But like when you grow up in those areas, you're like, oh yeah, I can see that. Like when you're like, oh, the owls and ma- like in heat and it's in mating season, you're like, they Super are. random, but, but country. But if you grow up in that area, you're like, oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, I know when mating season is for coyotes because you hear them, like, they have dens and they'd be yipping. You could hear them all yipping all over the woods and you're like. <laughs> it's love time. The yipping or the mating, which were you hearing? Oh, no, you hear, hear their little, I guess, their are they puppies? Calls? Their little, yeah. their little <laughs> their <love> babies? <laughs> no, like the, baby, they, the babies would Aww. yip. And then you'd hear in, like, a different area, you'd hear yipping over here. And then you hear yipping. Go- it's like they're talking to each other, but you can tell there's a bunch of dens because mm-hmm. it's like, over here and then over there and then over this here. This baby colony and this baby yeah, colony. Yeah, and I would hear it. Like you could just hear it. I don't know. Mm. When you grow up in like a, a country area, you know these things. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I felt really bad. I was like, seriously, if it was a fucking owl, I just can't live. Like <laughs> in the end though, I do still think one hundred percent he did it. Mm-hmm. Oh no, I, I agree. definitely think he did it. But they also I they didn't go into Germany very deep in this oh the other staircases yeah in the doc in the documentary they went deep into it Mm -hmm. in the hbo one they 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 did glaze over it they glazed over it because there's a lot there when like that's what makes you go ooh. like when you're watching the original and you learn about like all the details of what happened in germany they don't even bring up like the full details so at the very least, he's a shitty, shitty person. Yeah. Yeah. Did they go but into I all the? But I definitely think uh, that he's also a murderer. Did mm-hmm. they go into the gay sex? In the oh yeah. Movie? Yeah. That's a huge part they, of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's 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 got layers. <laughs> he's got a lot of layers. That man. <laughs> one part that I thought was interesting was how um, there's this part where one of his daughters is talking about the book that she read that he wrote and how she really liked the book mm-hmm. and. Um, how Kathleen had also told him that every single character that he writes is him. Like the nun, the war hero, the like all the sorts of different, the nar- <laughs> all these different characters mm-hmm. that he writes, they're different characters, but they are all him. So that's another example of how layered this man is. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, I can see that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he smoked a pipe. Which was, I'm not gonna. I love that though. I, I, Class. If I were a man, I'd smoke a pipe. I feel like, honestly, I, I, I have on my Amazon list a pipe, different pipes that I like. Do you really? Because I want one so bad, and I'm like, it just doesn't have the same effect if a woman does it. Mm. But now I'm, I know what to get you for Christmas. I want a fucking pipe. A cool and like pipe. My daughter saw me like looking for him, and she's like, "Are you gonna start smoking?" And I'm like, "I just really want a pipe, but like, <laughs> doesn't have to have anything in it. <laughs> I just want to walk around with a pipe." And I'm like, "I know that sounds strange, but it, it doesn't have the same effect on like if a woman does it than a man does it. But if I were a man, that would be my freaking go to look. I think if I, I was in the twenties, I would definitely walk around in one of those long cigars. I have oh, yeah. that. <laughs> on my thing. Then I was like, okay, so the more feminine side of the pipe is the cigarette holder, and yes. I was like, I've got those on my Amazon thing too, where I'm like, I need to have like, there's one you put your finger through and it sits there like i like that one as like Ooh, as an everyday fancy. use and then i have one that's a little bit longer for parties well, <laughs> so what's i the, haven't bought it yet but i just keep looking at it, it like i don't yeah. smoke anymore but so i really want these you things. have the cigarette holder but why is it so fucking long <laughs> it's for the effect why is it long do yeah. you remember i don't know breakfast at tiffany's is one of my Favorite, favorite movies. Have you ever watched it? I actually haven't. Oh, you need to. Uh-oh, now we're, I now know we're I'm in hot of- water. <laughs> you have, it's the best. I don't know. Like, it's one of my, and not just because like it's a classic and everyone says you have. No, I love it so much. I identified with her so much. She's just like Holly Golightly. She is so great. I remember watching it when I was like, when I lived with my old roommates when I was like young. And I'm like, guys, this is us. Like we kind of like, she's just such a character totally see her but anyway <laughs> the way she has the party at her apartment and she's got that cigarette holder that literally goes so tall it's above <laughs> everyone's heads and i was like if you remember so back extra. in the day but back in the day when you're at the bar or you're at the club or whatever it was you mainly the bar for me more than the club <laughs> when you're a smoker you're like you you get burnt people burn like you're, you get ashen on people by accident i was like that's brilliant that long ass, it's up there so she can still have her cigarette and she's if you ash on someone, who cares? But you're not burning who their cares? shirt. As long as it's not <laughs> you. But you're not burning their shirt. Like I've literally been, like I've literally burnt somebody. But oh, I'm sorry. Like back in the day, 
because it was crowded. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I thought it was great. But yeah, I don't know. We kind of sidetracked. Okay, so let's get into our stories, I guess. Yeah, what okay. we got. I'm going to start today. My boss actually recommended it to me. It is Ooh. a story that takes place in Spain and Italy. <gasps> Exciting. Yes, I'm excited. So hopefully I did a good job. And very but, timely. Um, I know. Please don't scare me from going there. <laughs> no, no. You, well, no, you won't be scared. I don't think. Anyway, <laughs> it's about the it's about Evie Anna Roder. I'm hoping... Oh, there's a lot of pronunciations that I really hope I get right. Um, yeah, let's just say apologize in advance. I'm just going to apologize wrong. now. I'm <laughs> terrible. This is why we have Melody because I can't... I'm so American. It's terrible. I cannot, I can't roll my R's. We I can't, forgive you. I can't pronunciate anything with an accent without sounding completely ridiculous. So I'm going to do my best. So Evie Anna Roder was born in Lana, Italy. It's a village that has about 12,000 people um, in South Tyrol, or Tyrol, I think is what it's pronounced. That's the other thing. <laughs> I had to keep looking up maps because like- Of Italy? Of Europe <laughs> and Italy. I'm going to go ahead and pull up a map of Europe so I, I have it in front of me. Because I needed the ref not being from there. Like, I'm like, okay, because their, their countries are like states for us. They're a lot yeah. smaller. Yeah. So I was like, I need to see, that, like, and also like how they, like, we have counties or whatever. I don't, I'm hoping I say it all right. In South Tyrol. All right. To her parents, Herman and Carol, uh, Carolina Roder and her older sister, Christina. So on August 30th, 1990, when Evie was 19 years old, after she had finished up all her schoolwork and her courses, um, she was dropped off at the train station by her parents so she could go visit her sister in Florence, where she was attending college. Um, They spent four days together exploring the city and enjoying each other's company. And then on Monday, September 3rd, they had breakfast together. And they discussed what they were going to do for the day. And um, before Christina left around 9 a.m. for class, she um, Evie informed her that she was thinking about visiting Siena, which is about an hour from Florence. So, you know, it's like a day trip. Mm-hmm. Um, she said that she, if she decided to go, that she would leave her a note letting her know where she went and what she did. Because this is before cell phones. <laughs> what year is this again? Um, 1990. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes That's when I was born. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I feel so old. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not too, I was 87. I'm not that young. No. So, <laughs> But, you know, before cell phones. So it's so funny when I'm reading things. I'm like, oh, my God. Even though I was alive before cell phones, mm-hmm. I still go like, oh, how do they live? Like, <laughs> you can't just shoot a text or like. Oh, where are you? I remember the Zach so Morris dangerous. cell phone from Saved by the Bell. It was just a big uh, box, basically. I remember those. Yeah. I had a, um, a fake one, a fake <laughs> cell phone, like a toy. Mm-hmm. Like kids nowadays have fake iPhones. Yeah. I yeah. had a fake. It was this big block, like you know, um, <laughs> a brick. It was this big brick, and With it was an black, yeah. and it had an antenna. You pulled up, and, a, and the, the mouthpiece flipped down, yeah. and you would hold it, and that was like fancy. Yeah, you were a baller. <laughs> if you had that. People, and I remember people being like, "Do you have a phone?" And I'd be like, "Yeah." I used to lie because I was six, and I was like, "Yeah, I have a phone." It was clearly fake, but like, <laughs> I thought I was so cool, and I was like, so "No, no, I don't want a pink one. I need the black one so people think it's real." Yeah. <laughs> Cell phones didn't re- start really like getting super popular until I was. Uh, maybe like 10-ish. So by Mm -hmm. then, by the time I was a teenager, everybody had a cell phone. So like, I don't really remember whenever you couldn't just text your mom. Yeah. I, um, God, I think I was in, middle school is when it started to get bigger. And then by high school, I remember the really cool phone was the flip phone and there was color. Color. Like, it wasn't just a little green screen. Did you have one with a camera yet or... I remember before the camera, but when the cameras came out, that was even cooler. That was my first cell phone. It was like a little a flip phone, and it had a camera oh, on it. See, I, I, I was, was so cool. I remember Nokia, where you used to snap on the, the um, on the front of it. You'd get a cover. You'd snap it on. Do you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> I think I do, yeah. I <laughs> think like I had one of those. And I mean, a was, rectangle. <laughs> yeah, but we would only turn it on. 
for outgoing calls. You would only turn it on for outgoing <laughs> yeah, calls. Yeah, because back then you paid by, I don't know, it was, it was a lot more It expensive. was a lot. By the text? Yeah. Well, they we didn't, didn't have, have text. text. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it was literally just a phone. So it was like in my car minute, yeah, for like, emergency purposes only. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, because you get in trouble. Like, you can't, like, if you had one, because mm-hmm. not many people had them. But if you did have one, like, Oh, can I use your phone? No, my mom will kill me. Because yes, exactly. you got charged per minute or yeah. something crazy. Yeah, it was. When was the the days of car phones? Oh. The days of car. Those, yeah, those were back in the seventies, even I believe. How did I those work? Like, how I come remember cell seeing... phones weren't a, a thing, but car phones were. That well, was a type of cellular phone. Do you ever see one in real life? I've never seen. I've a seen car them in the phone, movies. No. You know. I had a friend who they have cords had one. On them, I know O.J. They, Simpson yeah. had a car phone. It was, it like, was like this thing. It was like a. It was big. It had. A, it had a cord, uh-huh. and it was in the middle, like in your center console, and you pick it up, and like you dial out. I never used one. I almost feel like it was like, like a fax machine. <laughs> 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 like that kind of reminds me of. I remember seeing one, but I've never used one. But hmm, I same. was young, yeah. so nineties. Yeah. Yeah. Early 90s. I think they were around before 80s. that, but you were seeing more in yeah. the 90s. So fun. I had a pager. <laughs> yeah, me too. I, I did thought not it have was a pager. Cool. I remember seeing one because my dad seeing had a pager. One. Yeah. No, I had a pager. I thought it was cool, and then the only people who paid me were my parents, so then I realized I wasn't cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, see, I had, it's like, I wasn't, you know, you're not allowed to use the, the landline, the house phone, the only phone you had past a certain time. Mm-hmm. So my friends that, who whose parents didn't care or they had their own line would page me and then I would call them wow. you know so it worked out that's like the <laughs> epitome of cool if you're like a kid and you have your own line oh yeah <laughs> yeah my friends that had their own line because you can call and their mom won't know so you can call at any time and then I didn't like being on the phone though because I remember like little friends would three way call me and I'm like what are we doing oh they're setting you up <laughs> see I was the little bitch that was three way calling I was like, people I have to go. be quiet I'll Bye. ask her <laughs> I'll ask be quiet don't breathe hit me I'm like we're not talking about anything <laughs> i had the um the clueless do you remember the clueless phone it was like you could hang it on your ear it was like it was hand like a hands-free hands phone free. you could clip it to your pants <gasps> and it had a hook like you put it around your ear kind of like a headset like we mm-hmm. have at work now but it still was a cord but you could like walk hands-free and then it had a eavesdrop detector so if someone picked up the other line it says mm. someone is listening <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> i loved it because I'd be like, someone, I'm like, hang up the phone! <laughs> <laughs> Back in the day. <laughs> but Okay, we got totally sidetracked. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So hit a little history lesson. Yeah. On phones. <laughs> it's not a history podcast. <laughs> okay, where was I? So she was going to go to see, and she'd leave her a note because there were no cell phones. So when Christina arrived home around 1 p.m., um, she found a note that said, all it said was, I went to Siena. That's it, nothing else. So, hours went by, you know, she waited for her to come home. It got later and later, Evie never came home. The next night, she def and the next day, she didn't come home either. So, she called her parents because she was really concerned. She knew her suitcase was still there. Her stuff was still there. So, she called her parents, and her parents arrived in Tuscany, which I guess is the same as Siena. Again, I had to look up a map. Tuscany, Siena, I guess, like, county, whatever. I have no idea. But anyway, they ended up there the next day. Like, they got there right away. Um, So all together, they went and they filed a missing persons report. I guess they, it was taken seriously, and they were having um, searches done in Siena and in in Florence. Mm -hmm. Like, they were looking everywhere for her. Nothing was showing up. They couldn't find anything. Amazing. They Mm -hmm. took it seriously. I know. In the 90s. Within less than 48 hours. (laughs) Exactly. Well, but this isn't the U.S. Yeah. (laughs) And the U.S. they'd be like, call us in a few days. (laughs) She must have ran away. She's just just a a runaway. runaway. Yeah. But, um, so they did take it seriously. So it was on the news. People were looking. They And they did searches in both areas. They asked her if, because, like I said, her suitcase was there, they asked Christina if she knew what she was wearing that day. So by going through the suitcase and just process of elimination, knowing what she didn't have left, she knew that Christine, um, that Evie was wearing a turquoise t-shirt. It said dungarees, which I know I've heard the word. What are dungarees? Um, It was overalls. Yeah, I thought uh, dungarels were like dungarels. But I, dungarels. I, dungarels. 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 <laughs> dungaroos. <laughs> oh, those are delicious. Yeah, they were. Bring back dungaroos. Do they have them still? Bring them back if they I've don't. I've never had a dungaroo. What's oh, a dungaroo? A dungaroo? Yeah. Oh, my God. They were so good. They were really good. 
Uh, we'll talk about that later. Google it. She's I Googling. <laughs> so delicious. Um, dungarees, black plastic sandals, and a Casio digital watch. She was about... I had to keep... Casio digital watch. Yeah. So cool. <laughs> so I had, like, because, you know, measurements are different. They said she was 1.7 meters. I was like, Google, what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> she was 5'6". Okay. <laughs> Um, she was tall, 5'6", uh, with light brown hair, blue-gray eyes, normal build, and a fair complexion. And after going through her stuff, she realized she only had about 60,000 lira, lira? Lira? Lira. 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 Is that what it's called? I lira? Know. Lira is the Turkish currency. I don't know. Lira. Lira. I had to look it up. It's Italian money, mm. which I had to convert. So that's about... $33 in U.S. money, and I think it said about 30 euros. You know, it's very similar to euro, but they didn't mm-hmm. have euros then, I guess. So, and, um, so about 30 bucks in our pocket and a student voucher for the train. So they conducted all the searches. They couldn't find her. And then on September 4th, 1990, around 7.30 or 8, I got two different times, but around 7.30, 8 in the morning, 23 hours after Evie had gone missing, a boy reported finding a young woman who had hanged herself in a pine tree not far from a small campsite in, I wanted to say Porto, but I don't think that's right. It says, I had to look it up, Port, Port Boo. I think that's right, Porto. It's P-O-R-T-B-O-U. When I did the, um, the check mm-hmm. online, it said Port Boo. Port Boo or Port Bo, Catalina, Spain. It's a town on, and I was like, what, what does this mean? It's a town on the Mediterranean, sorry guys, Mediterranean coast next to the Spanish and French border. Mm-hmm. Again, I had to keep pulling up the maps. So I'm like, how far is all of this? The young woman was assumed to be around the age of 25. She had no form of identification or money on her. So, you know, if they had money, they'd have different money for each country. So they couldn't narrow it down. So the police tried to get leads on who the girl may be by releasing a description of her clothing to the public. Receiving a tip from a work crew that was out in the same area as her, um, they stated that they were in the area moments before the police had said that they were notified and that they had not seen a girl that fit that description or any sign of a girl. Like, they didn't see anybody, and Mm -hmm. and she definitely wasn't there when they were in that area. So it was literally just a very close time frame. Um, then they get another tip called in that they didn't say who, but it said um, a girl had been seen the previous day on a terrace with two boys that fit that description. Now, unfortunately, the tip ended up drying up and there was no leading. Nothing. It didn't lead to anything. Um, but what they did get a tip after putting out her description of the clothing is that her jean, or the, what she was wearing, the, um, I guess, dungarees. Dungarees. <laughs> dungarees. <laughs> the overalls. Um, mm-hmm. They didn't originate in Spain, and they were not sold in that country. So that let them know that she was a foreigner, that she was not from Spain. Um, but the one thing that kind of confused them also is if she's not from Spain, why would a foreigner come there to commit suicide? Mm-hmm. Um, if they're not from the area or have some sort of ties. They couldn't find any link so they also noted that her body, uh, when she was hanging, was facing toward the trunk of the tree, opposed to the outside, mm-hmm. which would be more common. That's different. And a hang yeah. exactly. She was yeah. facing the tree, like so. That's very odd. And she didn't have any, um, like the on the ground, like surrounding the pine needles. There was nothing on the bottom of her shoes, and her feet were technically she had bare feet. So her shoes were there, but her shoes were off, and there was no dirt or debris Mm -hmm. like it didn't show like her feet were clean so it didn't look like she had climbed a tree or anything um also she didn't have any cuts on her body or scratches like if she had climbed up and like jumped down to hang herself so like she just looked like perfectly fine so they noticed all of these little things um discrepancies the little discrepancies yeah so like originally like you can see why it would be reported as somebody hung themselves. Mm-hmm. But then when they are looking at it, they're like, this is odd. The rope was also 40 centimeters, which I converted 
for your for your for easy listening. Fifteen point <laughs> seven five inches, which would be one foot and three inches. That's how hmm. long the rope was. That's not very really short. Long. Yeah. Really short. And like the opening of like so mm-hmm. it made it that would make it really difficult to hang yourself. Like because yeah. you would have to put the knot in first yeah, like, to, to, knot. to put around your head. Like you'd have to make a slip knot or like a noose. Yeah. That's very small. This seems more and more unlikely that it's something that she did herself. Exactly. So, yeah, making it really difficult, like, for her to even slip something over her head. So, because, yeah, that's uh, one foot three inches. Mm. Get out Mm. of here. Not even a foot and a half. Um, And it was also tied with a sailor's knot, which would require some knowledge of tying knots, which she did not have. Um. Even with all these discrepancies and, like, they had a feeling that it, it, you know, it wasn't a suicide, they ended up declaring her death a suicide. Lazy police. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um... But this is the police in Spain now, This right? is Spain. This is in Spain. Yeah. Now... Evie went missing in Italy. That's going on over there. This is a day later. They were later. on it immediately. Yes. This is in Spain. This is an entirely different situation. Different police force. Yes. Like, there's no connection. So they're just doing their thing. Someone just found this girl. According to the investigators, they really assumed, they really thought someone was going to come forward with how she looked. Um, she was, like, really well put together. They're like, somebody has to. Like, it looked like a family. Someone's going to miss her. She's not mm-hmm. a wanderer. She's not a drifter. She was clean, well-maintained. They're like, someone's going to report this missing. They really thought within a few days they'd have an ID. Mm-hmm. It's a, a family member, a boyfriend, something. Somebody would be looking for her. So after about uh, three months of no one coming forward and no, one, no missing person report fitting her description coming in, they ended up... Um, I guess a court ordered the body to um, be buried. So she remained I- unidentified, and she was buried in, what is it called? Fi- the Figaro? ground? <laughs> yes, Kevin. <laughs> Basically, she was buried, and it says niche. Niche? Niche? Niche. I don't know. I don't know. Is this also in Spain? Yes. Niche? Niche, probably? I don't know. 134... On the fifth floor of the first ward of Figur- Figaro's Cemetery. So, basically in a very specific spot. They, they mm-hmm. ordered her to be buried. Um, in hopes of finding who she was one day, they did. They took her fingerprints. They took photographs of her, her mm-hmm. things that were with her. Um, they did not swap for DNA. Because even though it was 1990, they, I guess, Spain had not adopted DNA testing yet, like that form of investigation. So they did not take DNA samples. And but I feel like they were already doing that in a lot of places, weren't they? Well, in it was Italy, in the works, the and first, a lot of places were doing the swabs, even though the technology wasn't there yet. Yes. Because I know like, we'll have cases here that mm-hmm. are like cold cases. Yeah, that are like so 80s, old. 70s, 50s, but they were doing DNA swabs. And they'll keep yeah. stuff like semen samples. Like they kept all that knowing that science would progress. But I guess it was being worked on. And that's the other thing, too. I was like, I, I didn't see anything about like, was she raped? Like there was no, um, I. I there was no, like, Did I couldn't find a, an autopsy They didn't do report. a rape kit or anything like that? It didn't say anything. She had an autopsy, but it didn't say if she had been, like, sexually assaulted. Mm. She was dressed. Do you think perhaps they were keeping these things close to, like, not put out too much information in hopes of... Um, I don't know. I mean, maybe, but also it could have been out there. But a lot of the um, the articles I found... I only found so many in English, and then I had to find certain ones that I could transfer into English Mm because they were in other languages. So some of them I couldn't, like, transfer it to Uh, English. So if it's out there, I couldn't find it. Um, But it didn't really, because I was like, can I find the autopsy report? Like, that I want to look at. And um, because there are, I got pictures, you know, like, there are some pictures out there. Those are always rough. But, um, so I was wondering, like, but it didn't say anything about her being sexually assaulted. It didn't say, like, what the results of the autopsy Mm -hmm. were. So, I mean, it was, yeah, they, I mean, they, they deemed it a suicide, but I don't Mm -hmm. know how deep everything went because I couldn't find it. So, again, they took fingerprints, they took pictures, they ended up burying her. 
Um, oh, in Italy, I think the first, that's what I was going to say to you. So they were doing it in Italy in 1987 was the first murder that they like used DNA for. Um, it was Linda McKay. Yeah. McKay. So in 1987. So that was before 1990, obviously. Mm -hmm. And I guess Spain just hadn't gotten there yet. In 2015, they granted, um, the court granted permission to exhume her body to collect DNA. Um, but they hit a dead end because apparently 10 years after she was buried in 2001, she was moved to a mass grave, Aww. which will make it very hard because they had it very detailed. They knew where yeah. she was, what number, but like apparently, I don't know. It didn't say like who made this call and why she was moved, but she had been moved. Probably to, to make space. I have no idea, but they moved her to a mass grave. So that makes it extremely difficult to locate her body. Even mm. though, like, I think they're, like, argument with the court because they wanted to exhume her because mm -hmm. now that science has advanced, they wanted to try and get DNA and put her in the system. Do they not keep records at mass graves? I think a mass grave, I, like I don't know. I don't know. I thought, like, I know here, if you're just, like, buried by the state, if you're unclaimed, mm -hmm. there's documentation. There's I would number, think so, at least a name or something. But I don't know if it's different there because, like, she was buried... And they had, like, all that detail of where she was. Mm -hmm. And then to, like, move it for a map. Like, I don't know if they just... Then someone came around and screwed it all up. Yeah, I don't know <laughs> why. It didn't say why. And I'm not sure why. But, yeah, they put her in a mass grave, which makes it almost impossible to find her and know what was going on. Because she was... Mm -hmm. They did say that she was um, embalmed. So that way they were hoping that she would last longer for science later on. Yeah. And then around this time is when she was deemed by the investigators. They start calling her the bride, which I think is creepy. I just what is the purpose? Of because of her appearance. Like, because she was, I don't know. That's she was it, wearing overalls. That doesn't give me bride vibes. Did she have a They called her because she wasn't ring? like a wanderer. It was more because she wasn't a wanderer. She mm -hmm. wasn't, like, they really expected family member. Like, like, this girl has a family. Someone has to miss her. She's not... A wanderer. She's not some sort of like. But the bride. That's so creepy. I, know. I don't know. That's, that's so why, creepy. That's why I brought it up. I was like, <laughs> I think the bride's creepy too. Because I'm like, like she didn't have a ring on. Like, I don't know. It's weird. She she was wearing overalls. <laughs> <laughs> you don't wear overalls to your wedding? <laughs> no. <laughs> In some parts of the United States, possibly. Were they fancy overalls? <laughs> they were fancy. They were they were from they were imported. <laughs> oh, okay. That makes a difference. <laughs> they're from they're from out of the country. No, but yeah, I thought it was creepy too. That that's how they were. They called her the bride due to her like clean appearance, which I know, I know, it made me that's shiver so too. Gross. <laughs> okay, so thirty years later, Car okay, his, I would say Carlos, but it's C A R L E S, Carlos, Carlis, Carles. There you go, Melody got it. <laughs> C A R L E S, L E S, Porta. He's the director of the broadcast show Crimes. Um, in, hold on, I'm going to get this one because <laughs> I wrote it phonetically. So let me just think, Kalthulania Radio. I don't even know. Okay. <laughs> he is the director of the show Crimes, but they spell it Crims because <laughs> I don't know why. Because <laughs> I'm super American. <laughs> so moving on. I'm so sorry. Don't hate me. <laughs> Anyway, he began to take interest in this case. He remembered it. He was looking into it. Um, he remembered the unclaimed body and that he just started reading all the old police reports. Um, he discovered that six Austrian boys that were camped near um, the pine forest, they found her near a camp. Like, it was kind of, like, close to a campsite. So I guess there were six Austrian boys that were camping in, um, in that forest at the same time that she was found. So they, he kind of like made that, he thought maybe she was Austrian. So he decided to get in touch with the editorial staff of an Austrian broadcast called Ungelust. I did look <laughs> that one up. Now, that translates to unsolved. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I had fun with that one. <laughs> um, so they worked together on an episode called, uh, titled The Hanged Girl, which aired April 23rd or the 25th. I got two conflicting dates. On that name is a lot more um, appropriate. <laughs> the hanged <laughs> girl, the bride. Yeah. Yes, right. <laughs> the bride. Um, April twenty third or twenty fifth, twenty twenty two. So it just happened. What? Yep. 
So, Did you watch it? No. I tried to find it. I couldn't find it. Maybe it's not accessible to us. I don't know. I'll try again. I'll have my mom try. She can find everything. <laughs> <laughs> she's, my, she's my secretary. No. Your personal FBI. <laughs> she really is. She knows everyone's business. But, sorry, Mom. <laughs> putting you out there like that. But she does. She has files. She keeps little files. And, like, like, if I met somebody, like, you know, I'd be like, oh, I met this guy. She's like, what's their name? She wouldn't Stop tell me. Stop telling on your mom's and files. And she would have a file. She would look the person up, which, hey, whatever. Good for her. She'd look them up. And, and she, you. She would pull shit, and she'd, like, have a little file. And she'd be like, like, afterward, I'd be like, she wouldn't even tell me right away. I'd break up with them. She'd be like, oh, yeah, I saw that. I knew about this, this, and this. And I'm like, mom. Like, <laughs> would have been good to know. Yeah. <laughs> she, yeah, she's crazy. But anyway, I love her, but crazy. <laughs> Um, I love anyway. her too, and I've never met her. She just sounds awesome. She finds everything. <laughs> she finds everything, which I'm grateful for. So, <laughs> anyway, so he got in touch with them. They aired the show in April of this year, and a Jeez. woman from South um, Tyrell or whatever, you know, from the area where Evie was from, she was on vacation in Vienna, Austria. She saw the episode, and she remembered Evie's case, and thought that it could be connected. Like, she connected mm. the dots just by seeing that episode. Mm-hmm. Um, so she wrote an email to the show suggesting that the unidentified girl in Spain may be Evie Roder, 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 Roder from Italy. So right away, the um, editorial staff started um, from crimes, not even from the show in Austria, because the show in Austria, they were a little, like, hesitant to contact the family Mm -hmm. yeah because what if you're wrong but the people from crimes in spain were like no we're gonna contact her family so they got in touch with her sister christina after talking to her on the phone they gave her you know some details Mm -hmm. and they sent her photos of the clothing (gasps) and the objects of that they found with the girl and re- she recognized all the objects. The overalls, oh the shirt, the this shoes. This was in 2000? This, this just this happened this a year? couple months ago. <gasps> mm-hmm. Oh, my God. The watch. Um, yep. And she disappeared literally 31, 32 years ago. Mm-hmm. So all this time, they didn't know. Like, she just fell off the face. For them in Italy, she fell she off the face of the earth. She yeah. disappeared. And then here in Spain, they were like, we have mm-hmm. this mysterious woman. What is going on? No one connected the dots until randomly. How would they have known that she's in Spain? Well, ran uh, you, exactly. Well, that's part of the mis- the yeah. mystery. Like, why would she be in Spain? There was nothing to lead her there. But then, of course, reading all this stuff, they're like, to have someone in Austria see it because they thought they were just making that connection, knowing like who was around. So it just kind of worked out. The stars aligned. And um, as they do sometimes, as they do sometimes. So she, they sent the object. She recognized it all, and then she um, waited for the results of the fingerprints. After that, she also went over. Um, they sent her some. They had pictures of what she looked like, and mm-hmm. she knew right away that was her sister. So finally, after thirty-two years, they have found her younger sister. Oh my gosh! In Spain, so she cautiously called her parents to <gasps> inform them that. After 23 hours of Evie being missing, she was found in Spain. So they waited 32 years, and she was found. 32 years? Is that what I just said this whole time? Yeah, she was 90s when I was born. That's when she disappeared. That's weird. And she was found 23 hours. So just flip it around. 23 hours after she went missing. Yeah, no, right? I just made that connection right now. Creepy. Um. That was, yeah, so she, she was actually found 23 hours after she went missing. In Spain, 1,000 kilometers away, which would be converted to 621.37 miles. It's kind of a distance. Kind of a distance. Um, but remained unidentified until now. Her parents stated that they don't hold a grudge. Um, and a quote from her father is, I have nothing to reproach the police with. I tried to find more on the parents and the sisters, the family members. Mm-hmm. Well, it does seem like the police in Italy they did tried. what they were supposed to mm-hmm. do. They tried. It's and just... Yeah. So, I because I was curious, like, okay, I wonder how they feel about all this. Yeah. Honestly, what I got, like, I couldn't find a lot because, again, it's very new. So there wasn't too much, like, that I could find or even translate to, like, mm-hmm. what their thoughts were. I did find that. They did, they were very happy just to, like, 
know what happened to her finally. You could tell that they were just like relieved, like, okay, now now we know that she's gone, she won't be knocking on the door. Like her mom held on mm-hmm. hope Aww. that like every time the door would, you know, they get someone at the door, she was always thinking, is it her? You know, like she now they know they can put that to rest. But it also opens up questions of what the hell happened? Yeah, like, exactly. That's what I'm to ready to Spain. hear. <laughs> exactly. It's like so. It, it puts. I think they're relieved in the sense that like now they can be like, okay, she's gone. But now it opens all those questions of what the fuck. Yeah. So, um, Car- say his name again, Car. Carles. There you go. Porta said. <laughs> Here's a quote from him. It is clear that the ident- um, international police coordination mechanisms have not worked. In Italy, she dis- her, um, the disappearance had been reported. In Spain, the discovery was registered. Obviously a case of negligence because the family had reported her with the clothing and everything. And the Spanish police um, put in the same exact clothing in their report when they reported it. I guess two. They both were reported to Interpol. Do you know what Interpol is? I do. It's the European... Uh Police. The law enforcement between countries. Inter- Interpol is the International Criminal Police Organization. The international also organization that facilitates worldwide police cooperation and crime control. Founded September 7th, 1923 in Vienna, Austria. Oh, so not just <laughs> Europe. Okay. Nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I, it I didn't know it was not just Europe. Mm-hmm. I also thought it was just Europe. Yeah. But yeah, so they both reported it. So it should have somehow make next yeah. that's what he's saying it was clearly a case of negligence because mm. why wasn't it you know the clothing completely matched something should have popped up um so basically this is kind of where we left now we're just kind of left at they're relieved she's been found but now they need to decide what happened in those 23 hours how did she get from italy in florence where she was saying she was going to siena and end up in spain so they haven't reopened anything yet um the case will remain unsolved in spain because i guess spain has a 30 year like basically after 30 years you can't be charged with murder like it's 30 you know, they have a statute of limitations, <gasps> statute of limitations. I didn't, they have yep. a statute of limitations on, on murder? murder 30 years so well, now it's going i'm to- scared to get murdered <laughs> in spain <laughs> i will find out before 30 years you know we'll be over there but um yeah 30 so but it can it does not exclude opening the case um in italy so i guess italy can reopen her case so they're, they haven't decided yet because it is so new. Would it matter if it happened in Italy or if it happened in Spain? You know, I'm not sure because, like, I know that whoever did it, I know, like, Spain can't prosecute. I don't know if Italy can, but because there was, it's mm-hmm. you know, she was from Italy and there was a case opened there. I don't know, like, their laws and, like, how they work. But it did say that they can reopen her case. Whether or not they can prosecute there, I'm not sure how that works. Maybe if someone... I have no idea. But they can do something about it. Like, if it was Mm -hmm. someone from Italy and they can find out, like, what happened, then they can prosecute there, at least. I don't know. But I don't know if it's like, oh, the murder actually happened in Spain, so we can't do it in Italy I don't know I'm not sure I'd have to Hmm. ask somebody who's more informed on Italian law and Spain law you mean you're not (laughs) I know I I mean I sound so well versed (laughs) (laughs) but yeah so now that's where it's I'm gonna keep an eye on it and see like what happens but um but now it's like a whole your google alerts yeah so now it's a whole new chapter of what happened in that 23 hours did she? Because I was when I was reading it, I was like, "Did she get abducted?" Because they, from what you've told me, I also can't. There's no leads, at least from what you've there's told nothing. us. There's like, nothing. Because there's nothing to go off of, and it's not like you can check her Facebook or her phone. <laughs> you know, like it's. Do totally, they keep the rope and her clothing? They have or, all that. They do have that stuff. Um, could they look at it for maybe fiber evidence or DNA evidence? Well, they need to break it down even more. They need to see like what the heck happened, like. Here's what I was thinking. I'm going to share my thoughts. As I was reading it, I'm like, the note just said, went to Sienna. Did something happen? Did she get abducted from the house? Did she? Oh. You know what I mean? Did she? Did um, somebody make her write yeah. that note? Did she someone make her write it? Was there a reason she was going to Sienna? Do What's, we know? Exactly. Like, is she just going Did there? Did she normally go to Sienna? Was she normally that brief? 
Mm-hmm. But that's what I'm saying. Like, mm-hmm. like there was, I, I wonder, was she abducted from the house? Or did she go out and she went to Siena? Did she get abducted from Siena and someone took her to Spain? <clears throat> mm-hmm. Was she actually being very, uh, maybe she had a secret boyfriend we don't know about. You know, like, mm-hmm. I was wondering, like, did she go to meet somebody and then something happened? Hmm. There's just so many unanswered questions because now you have to figure out, now that they know, okay, she was in Spain, now, like, 32 years later, they need to backpedal and try to find how did she get from Italy to Spain. So they have a lot more work to do. So it's not, it's closed in the sense that the missing person case is closed, but now the hom- mm-hmm. you know, in that they haven't even officially opened it as a homicide. I personally believe it is a homicide. Like, that's you my opinion. know how I hate unsolved I shit. <laughs> you did this on purpose. <laughs> I know. I know. It irks so me this, to no end. I know it does. <laughs> but this is something that we're going to keep an eye on. I'm because so upset right now. Because <laughs> there's so many unanswered questions. But I thought it was, I got really sucked in. So I was like, I have to do a story on it. But maybe we'll do an update. I'm going to keep an eye on this. But do you have, like, your own personal thoughts? Or, I mean, I was, like, I want to know, like, if there were any irregularities on the note that she wrote. Was there anything? Yeah, exactly. But, I mean, there might. Yeah. Um, maybe, did it look like her typical handwriting when she's just writing calmly a, a note or mm-hmm. did it seem rushed under distress? Um, and then yeah. also again, like, would she normally be going to Siena? Is this a regular activity that she would do? Is there a reason that, but she was visiting her sister cause she didn't live there. So she was in Florence. She was just going to go. So I don't think that was a regular thing. I think mm-hmm. going to Siena was more of just something to do. Oh, because she was while there she was visiting, visiting. Yeah, yes. She was so I don't think it was a regular thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, all these places are so close. It didn't give me details of her whole life. Of like, does she visit her sister a lot? Did she, she have friends to out go there? Exploring or something? Yeah, I don't know. That's why there's a lot of unanswered questions. Hmm. That's why I'm like, I like the whole like finally that's put to rest, but then it just opens up a whole other story. Yeah, there's some closure, so much but, more. but not. Now there's, but now there's <laughs> so many more questions. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, so I'm excited about this. I'm gonna. Uh, I'm excited. It sounds so sick. I respect everything. (laughs) Don't judge me harshly. No, but this is something interesting. I'm going to keep an eye on it and see, like, how it unfolds. We're happy that her family has some closure, Mm -hmm. but now we we want to know what happened. Yeah. Once that, like, rush of, like, oh, finally, we know, once that wears off, they're going to be pissed and be like, what yeah, happened? Yeah, now we need some answers. Exactly. And people want to know, so I think they are going to probably reopen it. Were they able it. to recover her body from the mass grave to give her a proper burial? As of right now, she has not been, um, re- you know, they haven't gotten her from the mass grave. I, I did try to find more information on that, again, with it just happening in April. Um, they haven't said, they haven't released too much. That, again, that I could translate into English. If anyone has anything else, you know, send it to us. I'll check it out later. Yeah, because I would love to have more articles. But, yeah, from what I could find. But it's just so new that maybe now they're just keeping things a little bit more hush-hush. Close until they to get, the chest. Yeah, until they can figure it out. But, yeah, that's my story, guys. And thank you, Alex, for giving me that story. <laughs> Cool. So unsatisfying. I, you know, it's funny. You get like so. Fun. I get so irritated, and I like I get, I like good I get closure, but I also like a good mystery. Like mm. I'm just like oh, something to keep looking forward to, <laughs> something to <laughs> dig into. So I don't get as upset with unsolved. I'm like I get that rush of like I'm going to figure it out. <laughs> I'm going to solve it now. I'm going to Spain. I'm going to Italy, and I'm going to solve Detective this. Detective Aubrey on the case. Exactly, and then I just don't leave the couch (laughs) i'm gonna do it from the computer (laughs) no but yeah that's my story and if anyone has any details on this i'd love to hear it you can email us at mostly macabre pod at gmail.com and i'll also be posting pictures on the instagram um but i will put a warning before because there are some pictures that are kind of graphic because it's of the um of them Mm -hmm. finding her in Spain in the tree. So if you don't like that, I will put the nicer pictures in the beginning. Even though I'll probably have nightmares. Yeah, I'll show you. Anyway, thanks for listening and please come back. Yes, please come back because we want this to be, you know, a a success. (laughs) Tell your friends about us. Tell them to follow us. Share us. 
and send us any, you know, any cool stories that you hear, anything you want to share with us. We would love to hear it. And we just hope you keep listening. Till next time. Have a great week. <laughs>